On April the 28th, 2021, Miguel Lamboy alerted the Salida Police Department in Colorado that there was a dead body in his home. He said he'd been in Denver when a woman, Amy Carlson, died in the house he owned. And when he came back, he found her mummified in the bedroom. Who was Amy Carlson and why was she mummified? This is the story of Love Has Won movement. Detective Unit, please ignore the creased background going on here, the creased sheets, the creased pillowcases, the creased everything, okay? The bigger problems that we have at hand. If you are using left hemisphere of your brain, like I think everybody does, right? But if it's prevalent to you, if logic matters to you. Um, I do want to say exit this video now, but you will suffer. You will suffer like no other person. I really actually didn't want to cover the story of Amy Carlson, Love Has Won, beyond the trigger warnings that I'm just going to offload onto you. I just really did not think that this story made any sense and I didn't want to give it any more publicity. First things first. However, then I looked into it briefly and I realized, thinking logically again, that beyond the death of a cult leader, the cult stops functioning, right? Or the movement, rather, which is what they call themselves. It stops functioning. That's what I thought logically, right? In your head, you're like using common sense. That's not the case. This movement is operating right now, taking people's money under a different name. And that is when things have changed. And I have decided to ask one of my researchers, because I have actually had two, which is bizarre, um, one of my researchers, Jeannie, who loves researching cults, to be on the case again, to research yet another one for me. And here, she actually had a co-conspirator. She actually had a helper once she had written the script. She had read it to her son, Logan. So I just wanted to shout out both people. Jeannie, as always, make yourself known in the comments. She has scripted this. One. I have read it, inserted like some videos in it, found a bit more information in like another article that has been released sort of recently, semi-recently, on their backgrounds, and here we are. Here we are purely because I think this story has to be told from a different angle, from an angle of this is a cult, this is what they had done, they are still operating, why and how can they be stopped? So if that's something that you want to listen to, please stick the hell around. And as you know, I do deep dives on here, so um, make sure you like and subscribe. Before diving in, trigger warnings. Trigger warnings like no other bitch. This is one of the sickest stories that has been covered on this channel. There is child abuse involved, there's animal abuse involved, and I will be putting some clips of uh, both. So that will be upsetting no matter how prone you are to violence and like seeing things, horror movies, anything. This is a horror story that had actually happened. There's footage online and for you to actually get the feel of what this movement had done during Amy Carlson's life, you have to see it. You have to see it to make decisions for yourself. So there will be abuse of children, animals, deprivation of food, sleep, just everything really that you associate with cults. So if those topics are something that you don't want to listen to, I would say click out now, because as I mentioned, it's basically what the cult really, or this movement rather, is based on. There's a lot of it. So there's no point for you to continue with this video and then have timestamps in it because it's overarching theme really, of this movement. It's sick, sick individuals. For the name Love Has Won, there was just no love in this movement whatsoever. So if you're ready to start filming, well, then we are going to start um, with Amy herself and the background on her, what we know when it comes to her, how the cult had been formed, the movement had been formed, go into the timeline of that, and then speak about some other individuals along the way, and then obviously conclude this story with her mummification, how the body had been found, the autopsy report that Jeannie had found online, and then uh, the conclusion from Jeannie's son, Logan, actually, which is one of the more powerful conclusions that I have had on this channel, and I'm so glad that she had shared the script with him. So if you're in, Strap yourself in, put a cup of coffee, like try sipping on it. Actually, maybe not coffee, something calming, like painkillers. I don't advise them to take painkillers. You'll need a cleanse after it, so let's go. Let's just start so that we can consume it and then finish it off. Cool. 
Cool. To start in the chronological order, we have to talk about Amy first. Amy was born on November the 30th, 1977, in Dallas, in Texas. And this is where she would live with her mom and dad and three older sisters. Her family would tell you that she was a very normal young girl, that she would sing in church choir, and that she was a straight-A student. Amy's mother would tell you that the parents separated when Amy was a child. So when she was nine years old, her mom would remarry and move to Oklahoma City. The dad remarried around the same time, and there was a custody battle between them. We don't know much about the custody battle, but just from what I have read online, it seems like the family life might have actually been turbulent for Amy, because she would be living between her mother's house in Kansas and Oklahoma, where she would later describe had a difficult relationship with her stepmother. Her teenage years really weren't as remarkable. We also just know that she wasn't really prone to sports, so instead of that, she resorted to something creative, like participating in the church choir and in theatrical plays. By all accounts, and by her sister's accounts, she was somebody that people looked up to, and they would say that she was popular, charming, but not a dominant personality. Her mother puts it, she was not a leader. That came much later. By her mid-twenties, Amy would end up being married and divorced three times. And she would have three children, two sons and a daughter. And from the interviews that I have watched, it seems like each child was with a different dad. Amy was married three times by the time she was in her early twenties. Amy had three children with three different dads. After her third child was born, Amy became very distant. She did neglect her children. Around 2006, she started acting strangely. Amy has bounced around from different states. She started calling herself Mother God, and she believed that she was God. After she had a third child, when she was working as a manager at McDonald's, she became distant with her family, and very neglectful of her kids. They knew Amy had outlandish beliefs, like starships and UFOs, but this was something much different. Now, Jeannie put in the script, no disrespect meant to anyone who believes in UFOs and extraterrestrials, or to the many people who believe we are not alone in the universe. And I agree, but I have also added, but also, I wish that people who worked with her came forward. Like, imagine this woman working as a manager at MACD, flipping burgers, and at this point, like, you're just logging on for your shift, you're just checking in, and imagine the stories that she would tell you. Like, she must have, to some degree, been an interesting person, considering, of course, that she had also amassed, like, followers later on. But also, there must have been plenty of red flags that popped up. And I couldn't find, like, an interview with any co-workers. If you have worked with Amy Carlson, please get in touch. Just write in the comments. Okay, that actually might inspire a lot of people to invent stories. And I would believe them, honestly. Like, when you hear the rest of this story, whatever people were to invent in the comments, you would also believe them. The cabal was not expecting her to come in through McDonald's. They weren't expecting her to implement I'm loving it. And, and literally, she flipped it to love. She flipped those burgers to represent love. Plea to her ex-co-workers aside, she gets interested in the New Age concepts and starts posting online on a board called lightworkers.org. So, we have to have a quick sideline here to speak a bit about New Age. New Age beliefs entail reincarnation, astrology, physics, and the presence of spiritual energy in physical objects like mountains or trees. It started gaining popularity around 1970s. And even the first thing that you see on Wikipedia when it comes to New Age is that the unsystematic structure of any sort of movement, anything related to it, makes a precise definition of it difficult. This is when this case truly becomes two things. A. Very unsystematic. And B. Very American. I'll put on the screen what lightworkers.org, the website that she just started posting in, in this point in the timeline, is all about. Because how about you do the work and you tell me? Everything in this case is very new agey. So if, if you get it, you get it. If you don't, we are probably on the same page. This is where she met a man who went by the online tag, like a username, Emery White Eagle. And this guy convinced her she was a divine being. 
So she, of course, started having paranormal experiences from this point on, from what we know. Up until this point, she might have had outlandish beliefs. Again, not so outlandish for anybody to really come forward. And this is when everything changes. She would leave her husband, her family, and even her children behind to save the Earth. The kids were three, seven, and 12 years old at the time. During this interview that I have watched on Dr. Phil, and I truly hope that I can include as much footage as possible here, she would say that the kids actually begged her to live because she was on a mission. No one else could do what she was to do. So, of course, like this was a calling for her, right? And her kids begged her to leave. Yeah, I bet a three-year-old begged her to leave. Pretty sure that that is what happened. So she did leave, of course, to like leave with this man and have an affair and save humanity. And her heart broke every day for about a year. But all of them were just left with the dead. I just have to point that out because people usually don't. She says her heart broke for a year and then she just moved on like, fuck these kids. It's like there's a limit to mother's love apparently, according to Amy Carlson, at least according to what she says, what comes out of her mouth. For me, I did not abandon my children. I begged my angels not, I didn't want to leave. Um, and they told me I had to go on mission. If I didn't do it, then no one else would. And I had to make a jump and I had to make a decision. So just a and higher so calling. I, yes, absolutely. A higher so calling. I, I, gave her all, I gave her all the papers to their fathers and said, thank you for taking care of our children. I appreciate it. Um, and I left on mission. Did my heart break every day for about a year? Yes. Something to emphasize on here really is that her family, especially her three children, are the main victims in this story. You might consider that other people that you see in these videos are victims and have been victims, maybe at times even Amy herself, but something that plenty of people pointed out to, this woman will later be disciplining children, the mother who left her own behind. In late 2006, when she left her family, she began to talk about some things that made them think maybe she had a mental illness, but she was never diagnosed with one. As a side note, actually, her sister ended up taking the kids and raising them, and her oldest son, still to this day, thinks that she's crazy and doesn't talk to her. He went to see her once after she left, and he never went back. The other two had no contact with her. I'm just setting the scene here because from my own views after watching the videos, I don't think that just Amy had mental health illnesses. I definitely think there was something of food that could have been treated, that could have been reported, that welfare checks could have been made much earlier in this story, if anybody truly cared, if anybody cared about her or anybody in this movement, but that was never done. But I think just from the manic energy that you will see in these videos, I think that there is either drugs involved, mental health illness, or those two combined with plenty of people that you will be seeing on the screen today. At this point, the point of leaving McDonald's to save the humanity, she believed she'd lived over 5,000 lives in over a billion years. She said her purpose was to stop an intergalactic cabal from stealing Earth's resources. See, this sounds like a video game to me, but she truly believed it. She had been through 534 reincarnations and 589 assassination attempts. She said she had lived as Cleopatra, Joan of Arc, Queen Elizabeth I, Pocahontas, Marilyn Monroe, Amelia Earhart, and even Jesus Christ. And I produce miracles. <laughs> kind of like Jesus. I've done over 100,000 surgeries. I heal people of cancer over and over with the power of love. Robin Williams came in in 2014 when he died. He's been with me ever since. He talks to me. He's a guide. I have reincarnated many, many moments. I was Marilyn Monroe. Joan of Arc, Jesus. 
humanity's going to trip about that because they always thought Jesus was a masculine. On Dr. Phil, when she is asked how did she manage to live as so many people, she said that is because she has been on this earth 14,000 years before Christ. To prove that the moth is indeed mothing, she said she actually remembered being nailed to the cross and crucified. That is a big boast. She said she was called to a mission where angels told her she had to give up all the earthly belongings and serve humanity. I fully remember being hanged on the cross as Jesus. That would be 16,020 years that you've been alive. Yes. We're 2,020 years since the birth of Christ. So 14,000 years you've been on this earth before Christ. That's correct. No wonder you're tired. <laughs> That's uh, actually... Completely unironic question here. If you truly believe you can save humanity, where would you do it from? Drop it in the comments. Pause it right now, right here. Amy would choose Creston, Colorado. And that, to be honest, looking at Creston, makes complete sense. It's home to everything from Hindu ashrams to a Roman Catholic monastery, all in the shadows of Blood of Christ mountain range. Native American tribes called San Luis the Bloodless Valley. It was a place for sacred pilgrimages where violence stopped. In more recent years, New Age spiritualists and UFO enthusiasts have found the area to be a prime location for interdimensional portals, a place where a higher level of communion with the divine is truly possible. In short, Creston is full of believers. And Amy, even this early on her mission, had believers, who were called ambassadors. Over time, Love Has Won had a few dozen core members who have resided with the group in person, as well as an estimated 100 to 200 ambassadors, remote followers who would stay connected online. Ambassadors tended to communicate through different groups, Facebook and also large group chats on Skype, and also, even today, from what I have seen, through Telegram. Mostly like QAnon chats when it comes to Telegram, but those groups from what I have seen, are the biggest, the Telegram ones. Outside the main group residing with Amy, there were also auxiliary groups meeting in person in Australia, South Africa, and Central America. To these followers, she had to sell a story. So she told people that when she was four or five years old, she could talk to animals and angels. She would tell her followers that she called out her minister in church, and as you remember, she was the one singing in the church choir, right in the middle of the sermon, because she knew he was getting it wrong. Her parents would say that, no, this indeed did not happen, ever. So, right now, back to Amarif. She's chatting with him online, Amarif, White Eagle. He becomes Father God, and she was Mother God. He was her twin flame, but she was the divine being. Twin flame is something that I have to divine... <laughs> Well, this is already influencing me. Something that I have to define as it is going to become prevalent in the story. Twin flame means you have your own soul shared across what appears to be two physical beings. So it's soul split in two bodies. Two bodies, same soul. You get it. You get it. It's very easy actually to explain, but you either believe in it or you don't. Amy, Mother God, Father God's here clearly did. She was possibly more susceptible to a man like this as she had been in several abusive relationships prior to meeting Emerith. And one ex-boyfriend was interviewed and talked about what a heavy drinker she was, even back then. I would sit and drink Cokes all night and pay for her shots of Cuervo 1800. She, uh, she could drink any guy under the table. I, I don't know how she did it. She was like... Karen Allen in Raiders of the Lost Ark, you know, she'd slam shots of Cuervo 1800 like it was tap water. This is where I put in the script when two mites want to share their ideas with the world, they turn to YouTube, because this is what happened in 2009. At the beginning of this year, an organization calling themselves the Galactic Federation of Light uploaded a video to YouTube called Father God Speaks to Humanity, Kingdom of Heaven, Galactic Central, number one. 
that shows clouds and mountains outside a moving car window, while a male voice talks about how beautiful the scene is that he, as God, has created. Blessed is the love called God, within the very heart of creation. Then, on October the 23rd, 2010, a similar video was uploaded to their page, where Amy, Mother God, filmed the same kind of clouds in the sky, but she insisted the clouds were spaceships. In April of 2012, they changed their name to Galactic Free Press. The very first video Amy is seen on was uploaded on November the 19th, 2012, and it's titled Mother and Father God Declare Peace on Earth Equal Heart and it shows her and Emery saying that statement. This is Mother and Father God and the Earth Allies, and we declare peace on Earth equal heart. Peace on Earth. We will see some pictures of Amy in later life where she just doesn't look good. And what I mean by that is she looks sick. I'm noticing her physical appearance. She just looks ill, emaciated, starved, literally starved to death. But in these older shots, rather where we are at at the timeline right now, she looks healthier and happy. Seeing them, she genuinely looks like somebody who just discovered New Age in late 60s, early 70s, like a hippie from that era, where it was all peace and love and everyone was okay. These two, however, couldn't just show clouds on YouTube and tell people that they are spaceships. That's not how you convince people that you are God. You have to really use your ambassadors, people that you have convinced in your ideology. And those people here were called the First Contact Ground Team. Their mission was, or maybe still is, to prepare those who are ready to come home into the Heaven 5D reality. They said in lives that they were ready for all of us. I'm going to assume they mean the people that they expect to come there, not all of us, literally, like 8 billion people. We reached 8 billion people this week, didn't we? Or is that like a fake Twitter account? Everything is a fake Twitter account under Elon Musk. I dreamt that I worked under Elon Musk the other day. Truly a nightmare that I have woken up from and had not slept since. <sighs> what the fuck? Anyways, moving on. They also explain that we are living in a 3D world and that we need to be in tune with 5D. So they make it sound like you should be watching HD, right? You should be watching this video in 1080, whatever HD, but you're watching it in SD instead. Amy said, we have our away teams present on this planet. I'm not sure what other planet they could be on, but they are ready. At this point, they are ready. So the first contact ground crew team, which really does not roll off the tongue, nothing in this story does, at least make it catchy, make me like say it quickly, make it run, make it like a HD GAWM, how to get away with murder. Okay. But you know, make it a hashtag. Mother God, with the first contact ground crew team, our roles are to prepare those who are ready to come home into, into heaven, 5D reality. And we are ready for all of you. We have our away teams present on this planet. The first contact ground crew team sat in front of the colorful tapestries, joked around together, argued, listened to Amy, and talked to anybody that would watch. They took questions from the live stream chat audience, and mother and father were not regulars in these videos. In the beginning, they sometimes appeared, but over time, Amy's presence dwindled and eventually ceased altogether. One of the members of the ground team that will go under the name Hope would explain that Amy couldn't appear on video, because if she did, the viewers' bodies would explode, because her vibration is so high and all of yours is so low. If that sounds condescending, this is just the beginning. In every single life, they tell you all the reasons why you're shit, why their family is shit, why everybody's shit, and why they're just all above us. And it just goes on. So just get ready. If you find that to be a bit gaslighty, gaslight, gaslighting, it will continue to be exactly that. Somehow, life in HD did not include this father god. We learned about the ground team in 2014, and this is also when Amy left Emery. Now, Amy alleged a lot of things along the way. 
In this case, she alleged that Emery had abused her and locked her in the closet. Pin this in your head. We will see the use of closet later. So, stick a pin right now, we'll go back to it. She said that Miguel Lamboy, the man from the beginning who reported her dead in his house, saved her after Emery was so bad to her, allegedly. With the departure of First Father God, things get weird. She says like she's telling you a completely logical story. So, still in 2014, we see the first appearance of Miguel, who Amy called the Archangel Michael, in a video where he says, we have triggered the event. But he didn't explain what event was triggered. Before I continue, one thing to point out is that all of the property, house, vehicles, etc. are in Miguel's name. If you ever went through a breakup where then with your friends you didn't really share nice words about that person, yeah, Amy beat you probably by a far, like by a lot, by a couple of miles. Because after the breakup, Amy's followers called Emerith Alistair Crowley and said that he destroyed their website and stole money from Mother God. Again, these are only allegations, and as a reference, Alistair Crowley was called the wickedest man in the world, mainly because he was an occultist who performed dark magic. Also, allegedly. These are the first cases where you will see the members of the movement actually justifying her actions and taking the blame for them. And in the Vice interview that I have watched, they will always take the blame on themselves, at least partially, saying that we shouldn't only go after Amy, rather the whole collective. So, the beginning of 2015 brings us the Galactic News updates. This is where it was explained that there was a new Father God, a man named Andrew, who stayed with the group to the end of that year. Father God, as you might have picked up, is quite a temp position. They're the interns in this universe. Andrew has gone online since leaving and said that he got to Colorado, and after he took the taxi ride, showed up in the house that they were all living in, he said it was a big mistake and that he'd made a big miscalculation. I couldn't find a video of this interview, but I found it scripted. And a few points that he makes is that Amy was a heavy drinker, even when he was there, so even in 2015, that she had appeared in different videos drunk and also she would smoke some weed, despite banning the use of drugs for her followers. We're gonna go into that in a split second. There's another interesting point that he makes, and that is that according to him, this is when the group turned into a cult. So, when he was there, he would pick up on red flags, like, immediately after dinner, as Amy was drunk and just belligerent and belittling everybody, basically telling them what to do, and when he noticed that there are clear rules when it comes to this group. But he also definitely says that he would characterize it as a cult now. So, this is 2015 that he had said that this is a cult. So, every cult by default, needed followers, and as they started gathering those, they needed rules. Some of these Genie would like to apologize are beyond bizarre. So, let's get into them. When you arrive, you must turn over all of your belongings to Mother God, for her use, especially money, of course. No one was allowed to have their own. So, that was actually considered stealing if you were to withhold money. The members in the videos made this sound like they're willingly donating, and that Mother God would accept you even if you had nothing to give. And then anybody who was there who left the cult or just people observing would say that that is not how that operated, how that worked. There were no relationships, of course, sexual or otherwise were allowed. There were no relationships, sexual or otherwise, that were allowed. The only way you could be in a relationship was if you were assigned a twin flame. So, basically, they decide if you can date and whom. There were no drugs or alcohol, and that was a clear ban, except, of course, for, for Amy, for Mother God herself. Because she would go through a lot of tequila every day. She says that's okay, because alcohol is organic. This is a consistent argument that Hope and Aurora, the two members of the ground team that you will see on most lives during this video as well, would keep saying. Because, yes, it was a no on drugs, but alcohol is a natural painkiller. And 
Mother God herself was sick because she was exerting herself and couldn't take morphine because morphine is, of course, the opposite of natural, so she had to drink. Where were these girls when I was like 15 years old? Where were they? I was taking like my first shots of vodka, getting freaking belligerent, like two shots. Where were they to justify all of my freaking actions and say like, it's natural, it's natural. When my grandma like boils a whole pot of rakia like at the age of 90 to cure a flu. Where were they to justify her actions? God damn it. We all need friends to support our wrongs sometimes. Not to this degree, of course. It's like... Mom is a no on drugs. We are not allowed to do drugs. She doesn't do drugs. And she has kicked people out of this field for doing drugs. Got it. <laughs> she's organic, so she's not going to consume pharmaceuticals. But she does it with alcohol, which is organic, and that's what she explains as a natural painkiller because she cannot take morphine. There are also live streams where you would just see Mother God taking a hit from a bong. Also, all of the members doing mushrooms and in a few places when it comes to the lives, actually admitting to having done shrooms. The members of this movement would only be allowed to sleep four to five hours a day. They would go to bed at midnight and sometimes later, but must be up by 5 a.m. No excuses. Bus, or I didn't want them to feel like um, I was trying to throw them under the bus, and it's really just a lack of, you know, letting them take their own responsibility, not wanting to trigger them. But at the end of the day, it's their lesson to have, and it's my place to just give them full truth. There are videos online of this man being woken up, people clearly saying that nobody slept, and Amy would, as always, have a response for every single accusation. I'm transparent. Some of the other accusations were that you use sleep deprivation as a way to control people. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> One more thing. It's funny. <laughs> Do I do that? <laughs> Absolutely not. They're jealous. They wanted to do what I do, that I've done. So they want to take it from me because they, they want it for their own. So, but I did it. I am bringing peace to the planet. That's my role, it's my job, and I'll do whatever it takes. There's a video of this man being woken up and people clearly saying that nobody had slept, berating him for sleeping, like how dare you sleep when nobody else is, like nobody here went to bed. However, then you also see Amy, who would have a response for every situation. Her response on Dr. Phil was that this is energetics, that she had set up boundaries, but this, this is definitely not a rule that they go to bed after midnight and wake up at five, no. They all also take naps, so it all works out sometimes. The moth is moffing. I mean, she had lived 14k years or whatever before Christ, so clearly in her head, the moth always makes sense. Uh, yes. Yes, what? Oh, God. Really? Mm -hmm. When? When you choose? Today, as soon as I'm Sometime up. today? As soon as I'm up, yes. Okay. Well, when are you gonna get up? Because everyone's up. We never went to sleep. Why are you sleeping? You had your hour and then we got you up. Like a new day. This went back to sleep. <laughs> oh, wait till mama hears what happened here. <laughs> Ashley, is that the kind of thing you're talking about? Yes. Um, whenever we uh, were supposed to stay up past the midnight, it was kind of a big deal if you weren't, if you were falling asleep or if there was something that, if you were getting tired, you'd end up being berated for it, as you saw in that video. Yeah. Amy, what's the, what's the purpose of that? It's energetics and it's consciousness, and a lot of beings are not utilizing their sleep properly. So I just set up boundaries so that everyone knew that, and, cause, and they all take naps. Food is also limited, because when you're in the right action, you actually require less. Right action is basically being in tune with Mother God. Men must be sitting down. See, Ginny told you, some of them are just fucking weird. 
You're also not allowed to think. This is a very important one. Instead, you had to feel. So instead of saying, I think the sky is blue, you had to say, I feel the sky is blue. So here they're actually telling you not to think, that thinking is bad. I could make something up right now and I could produce a bunch of fake documentation and be like, look, here's my proof. And everybody eats it up. They all want proof of something. Well, what is the proof? The proof in and of itself is fake too. So you can't navigate the world like that. That's being in the mind. You can't think everything through and analyze it because it'll never make sense. It's not real. 90% of what we are told and what we hear is made up or it's manipulated or it's put through a filter. So you have to start navigating the world by the way that you feel because your intuition is what will get you through, not the mind. And luckily enough, even though I was in the mind, we all have the programming, I was in my heart enough that I always followed my intuition. I was never wrong. And as soon as I, I would read something or I would hear something, I would get like hives or like chills. I would know it was true. My body would physically tell me and I always followed that. So everything that mom has ever shared with me is things that I already felt were true by the way it felt to me at the time. In the Vice interview, I believe it's the Vice interview, honestly, I have watched so much shit so that you don't have to hear. So Aurora, one of the two girls that you keep seeing in these videos, would actually speak on the logic behind this, saying that in life everyone wants proof, right? But proof in itself is fake. You can't analyze everything as it's not true, it's not real. So you have to start navigating the world by the way that you feel. Another rule is that you are not allowed to remember something. Instead, you have to reheart it. No comment. No one elaborates on this. It's like, <laughs> I put in the script, is it like when you have a picture with your ex and you like it and then you unlike it, only to like it back again once you get back together? What was going on through my head? Like, genuinely, <laughs> my script commenter here. Speaking of cutting it out, what a segue, it's important that you cut ties with family, with loved ones, with friends outside of the cult, even your children. The girls in the lives would speak how it's not that you lose touch with your family, just your level of consciousness is different. They actually, again, gaslight the living shit, and I think this is what the Vice interview yet again, they just say, like, I mean, they're just talking about, you know, like, random mundane shit, like what Sally down the street did. And we are here with the Mother God. Of course that we are going to have different topics. Of course we're going to be on a different level. Obviously it is them because they're not connected to their soul, but for them to really understand, it's like, if your family member, son, daughter is happy... Why wouldn't you wish the bet and they communicate with you and, and you can talk to them still? It's because they don't care about the things that they care about anymore. Yeah, it's just they kind of... You know, like if we talk to people in, we call it 3D, but, you know, talk to people in kind of a lower consciousness, like they only talk about the same things. They talk about what Jane down the street did last weekend and what restaurants knew and yeah it's kind of hard to, to still have that relationship I'll, I'll talk to my my earth father like text message I really don't speak to him on the phone because there's not much to say at any time you know he, he doesn't feel the same way I do so it's like it's not that we don't want to talk but my dad is also the same way as me where he's like well what's the point I'm gonna tell you the same thing the weather's nice you know how are you doing you still alive great like we move forward and I feel it's just a really immature way to, to see that we are still not done with the rules. And this is something that she, Mother God, would keep repeating in most of these interviews, how there were no rules with this organization, with this movement. Well, there's still a lot of things that were actually imposed and showcased in lives and confirmed in lives and confirmed in interviews. I don't know what she would call them. She didn't call them rules, however. One of the more bizarre ones is that you can only wear certain colors on certain days. So, not in the mean girls kind of way. However, it's more about being one with the vibrations. And the color is emitting those vibrations. So, actually, maybe a bit like mean girls. On Wednesdays, we wear pink. 
you weren't supposed to sit during the day. If you weren't in motion, you were taking energy from Mother God. Some of them worked all day outside, in the garden, when they were doing lives on Facebook or YouTube, then they could sit. Aurora and Hope, in uh, this interview with Vice, again on this, say, well, we are sitting right now, you know, like, this is clearly an interview. It's more about how lazy people can get. Like, if you're constantly sitting, you know, like, people are very, leading very sedentary lifestyles, basically, these days, and it's all just about us, again, being different, basically just saying, again, how superior they are to people who are just couch potatoes. I don't know what else. They just take any chance, any chance to tell you how better they are than the rest of the world. With it. Like, it's not like what people realize is like the ones that are, again, watching from the outside looking in, like, they think that, like, the, like, the team is like, oh my god, I don't want to do this. Like, why are they forcing us? Like, the team, like, if they're like, there's something going on energetically and, like, they realize, like, moving around more or being more active is going to help keep things better, then they will do it. They have fun. So it's like, but anybody that has said things about the no standing or it's no It's usually sitting, people that are really lazy. I don't know. It's that, weird. That are it's very time I triggered, triggered by the amount of movement that we do on a daily basis because we're constantly running around and doing different projects and outside, inside. And um, it, I think it's the people that grew up in a different way and maybe they grew up sitting down a lot. They were the people that sat on the couch all day and laid in bed all day and so they get very triggered by it. The last bit on the rules, or rather exclusion of the rules, who the rules didn't apply to, and we're going to touch upon this in a second, is that non-believers are whores, or spiritual whores, as in that is what they would refer to them. Spiritual ego whores, done! You're not connected to me. With every story, even remotely culty, we speak of punishments for not complying with these rules, and even in those cases, those punishments seemed unreasonable. And a power trip for the leaders. Here, it's truly something else. They had something called Desolation Road, which members were sent to when they were out of right action, or if their vibrations were too low. Basically, if you break a rule, or even make a mistake, you were sent to a camp about a mile away from the house to stay until someone came to get you and tell you it was okay to come back to home base. There were no instructors there, no food or water, only an empty tent. Sometimes it was freezing, because remember, this is Colorado where everything is taking place, so snow is also an option. There were two more things that they used to control the group or punish them. They were made to play a game called Find a Whore, where they would make them turn on each other. The group had to find a woman that was maybe a little too confident or outgoing that day, and she was named as the whore. When a woman seemed too happy or was fitting in too well, Amy would decide she had Lilith energy, was out of right action, and was in trouble, sometimes sent to Desolation Road. So we're going to play a little game now, with everybody up there, called Find the Whore. There is a Lilith amongst you that is sucking the energy Mother wishes the Galactic wish you to discuss amongst yourself in front of the camera and find out who it is and call them out. The number one rule, the one to top them all, is Mother and Father God above all else, even your children. So when you join this group, you sign a contract which makes you accountable and responsible for all of the rules that I have just listed. Also, part of the contract says that you will literally lay down your life for Mother God, in whatever terms that ends up being. Something added to the contract later was you had to swear an oath that you would never take Mother God to any hospital or an urgent care, even if she asks you to. This might explain the beginning and the end to our story. In December 2015, a video was posted showing Amy had a new guy, called RJ, on a beach in Clearwater, Florida. And they are getting married. But he wasn't named Father God. Then, in 2016, Amy finds a new Father God, a man named Jonah. Remember RJ, because he has one of the most iconic appearances in this whole mess. 
but also because we now speak about somebody else and then he returns, he pops up there for a second like Mariah Carey every Christmas. In 2016, Amy finds a new father god, a man named Jonah. He was seen on a video summoning Lucifer, and it's not clear why they want him to do this, but he gives it his best effort. Jean is one of the best lines in this script. He is not in love with his one anymore, but at the time he's seen a video saying that $30,000 has been stolen and their website was also taken down. They start asking for donations, making it seem like Mother God is really broke because of this theft. They're named King and Queen of the Planet by Amy. Remember RJ, though? Because I told you to remember the guy who is not Father God but is married to Amy. Well, in the next RJ video, he says that they can't go to Mount Shasta to unlock the secrets there and have a divine marriage ceremony. Why can they not do that? Because all of the money for the trip was stolen. During this video, RJ is sitting at a desk, talking about the state of affairs, and you can hear a woman, most likely Amy, off-camera telling him what to say. He accuses the previous father god, Andrew, of stealing $17,000, and he says that the father god before that, Emerith, stole $20,000. So he says that there is close to $70,000 overall that has been stolen from this wonderful woman. The math, yet again, is not mathing. Yes, the divine marriage is the, the ceremony that is to take place in Mount Shasta. Which the funds to accomplish this were stolen. Yes. Yes, it has. We need your help, humanity. He starts asking for donations and telling the people watching that Mother God needs money for food and money for games, because it seems, ladies and gents, that Mother God likes to play games. This is something that they will be begging for money with funds for Mother God's games. She loves to play games on her phone. Later, they're going to talk about how playing these games is the only kind of peace that Mother gets, because she takes in all of the world's hurts and sins. It's hard to be a god. On May the 12th, 2016, there's a video titled New Planet Ascension Guide, where Amy talks about how she is going to ascend and save humanity. On July 26, 2016, there's an Ascension Gate update. Lionsgate roars in Love Has Won. This is the first time that Love Has Won is mentioned. Also in 2016, Archangel Michael, as known as Miguel, becomes one of the main faces of the channel. He may not truly believe, quote-unquote, but everything is in his name. If the leader happens to die, it's all his. He does say on a live that Mother God cured him of cancer. This was one of her most dangerous customs. She started doing what she called ateric surgeries. And no, she's not a doctor, does not have any qualifications to do so. There were surgeries she would do with her mind, of course to get rid of bad thoughts and get a person back into right action. Beyond this, beyond these surgeries, there's still a video on their YouTube page where two members are discussing Mother God and how her effects actually feel in the body. And they're not referring to even a surgery here, rather just her normal saving humanity, bringing all of the vibrations into alignment part. They talk about how if you have pain in your chest, that is actually Mother God expanding your heart. And even if you feel pain, there's no need to see a doctor. It's not a heart attack, it's just Mother herself. This is something just incredibly dangerous to say to anybody, let alone saying it on a live where who knows how many people are watching and what their health is like, how susceptible they are to the information that they are actually telling you on this live, when you just, I don't know, looked up something new agey and you are in a vulnerable position in your life and somebody just tells you, oh, that's not cancer, that is just Mother God expanding your heart. Just, please, this is why I'm covering this case. These etheric surgeries, of course, were not for free. You have to pay for them. And they spend a whole lot of time talking about how you should buy one for your husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, and also your mom and dad. And hey, do not forget the pets. She can work on your little pups and little kittens as well. And if you listen to the trigger warnings, you know where the story goes. So you're about to start filming. Everything she do had a fee attached to it. 
They had followers all over, just as a reminder. The UK, South Africa, Asia, and Australia are the biggest, but honestly, anyone anywhere that had an internet connection could have in some way, shape, or form be a follower. I think the majority of the people so far would put everything that we had spoken about in the pretty bad realm. And then in 2018, a man called Jason came along. In 2018, when Jason Castillo, who eventually becomes the next father god, arrived and joined the group, things changed drastically. Mother said that she and Jason, father god, had been separated for 19 billion years. She said she sent him to the depths of hell, and while father god was gathering darkness, she had to balance out the harmonics of heaven. So she created a title, Father of the Multiverse. These are placeholders while waiting for him. Some people just say, I found my other half. That is too basic for Amy Carlson. She said Father God, Father of the Multiverse, and herself are known as the Holy Trinity. They are spoken about in all the books. She means the Bible. But she and this Father God are twin flames, basically two bodies that share the same soul. And when they came together in 2018, it was going to usher in the next Big Bang. The best line Jimmy had ever written is the next one. He was in charge of taking care of Mother God, which meant keeping her full of her liquor of choice, Cuervo Gold Tequila. On many videos, you see him pouring shots for her. In one, she takes a shot and throws up. He walks back over to get her another shot. Besides drinking more and more, Amy had pretty much stopped eating, and her eating disorder is on full display anytime she's on video. You can compare the mother god from before she got to Colorado and the cult took a more radical turn to the one in later videos, who is just skin and bones. But when her most devoted are asked about Amy's appearance, they say that she is taking in all of the pain and suffering of humanity, and this is what is killing her. On April the 12th, 2018, Jason was made father god in a big ceremony where they were all wearing white. One myth that they all perpetuate is that by 2018, Amy was paralyzed from the waist down. And she doesn't say why exactly, but she's carried to the bathroom and back, carried everywhere. This is disproven later in videos where she's moving her legs around on the bed. Before I jump right back into the timeline, let us spend a couple of minutes discussing the man who will be father God at the very end. Jason Castillo was orphaned very young when both of his parents died, and he was known to be homeless in Las Vegas for a period of time, had a criminal record of child neglect and DUIs. About his own childhood, he would say that he remembered being five years old, maybe six, sitting on the weekends in his grandparents' house. He'd sit on the stairs and look at the picture of Jesus. There was beautiful cracked gilded glass above the lamp in the hallway and this auburn glow. I would sit there and just stare at Jesus, who was myself. I really required like the end quote and the beginning of quote there, otherwise you might have thought that out came out of me, it came out of Jason. Five-year-old Jason saw Jesus and saw himself. According to his sister, Mindy, he was confident, he was attractive, he was athletic, making a name for himself as both a football and a baseball player. He even earned the nickname Chavez, after Eric Chavez, then the third baseman for the Oakland A's. I couldn't actually found at what age his parents passed away, but according to this Rolling Stone article, for most of his formative years, his mother was single, and according to his sister, Castillo would step into the role of the man of the house, always seeking to support their mother. Jason would, of course, echo this feeling by saying that the father had actually left them all a day after his birthday. How the father came in and started arguing with the mom, and he said to Jason that he was out. Then Jason calmed his mom after his dad left and said, I'm right here. And that was the earliest that he could recall the responsibility of being a father. Now, for this group where 2 plus 2 is definitely always 4, he thought he was Jesus, and then he thought of himself as a great father. Sometimes life is very simple. He saw a calling in himself. Father God. 
Around 1999, when he was in his mid-twenties, Castillo would relocate to Sacramento. There he would meet a woman who would become his wife and would stay dead for about 20 years, and they would have four children together. He would come to call them his 3D family. Remember, 3D is more like SD compared to HD, and the higher level, just shitting on their past lives as always. So by 2007, this family, Jason's family then, would have settled in Las Vegas, and this is where he would work for an appliance installation company. His sister would say this is when he actually struggled with substance abuse, and by as early as 2013, Castillo had already developed an interest in Amy and Love Has Won through her online presence. Similarly to Amy, he starts talking to his family here about ascending, about how Jesus was a woman, and other concepts in the Love Has Won ideology. I am really, really struggling not to use Ariana Grande's song, God is a Woman, because that's such an iconic tune. What do you mean Jesus was a woman? Either is or isn't especially when you're joining one who you believe is Mother God herself. Anyways, sideline. A few years later, he was invested enough to join Amy in person, leaving his kids behind, of course. He would say, my 3D children are the greatest children on the planet. And yet, his duty was elsewhere. They're always aware that the needs of a few are unimportant compared to the whole planet. There are 8.5 billion children, he says. Yeah, the math. It's just bad in math. This whole group is just terrible at math. He moved to Creston and stayed glued to Amy. We pick back in the timeline here. When Jason joins and becomes Father God, the current one, John, was demoted to Father of the Multiverse. There are allegations of sexual assault on members against Jason, but Jeannie was unable to find any documents, any proof to back that up. There are things that he does that you can see on the videos that aren't allegations. First, there are many videos where he is screaming in a follower's face, holding them against the wall and berating them for failing mother in some way, and most times his anger was pointed at a man called John. In one video, he threatens to paralyze John from the waist down, and this is just for a simple thing, like not getting mother the food that she asked for. He also brings the racist and anti-Semitic theme to the group that you didn't see before. He is seen in one live talking about the N-word and whores. He catches himself and says the N-word has nothing to do with the color of your skin. Is the worst of the worst, bottom of the food chain, cockroaches. Because just like with the multiverse and their titles, they decide what the N-word truly means. Around this time, in 2018, there are also two women that you must have already seen throughout this video that joined the group, Aurora and Hope. Like so many people, they had fallen for the recruitment tactics of the cult, preying on the vulnerable, love-bombing them into joining the cult, even going as far as saying they can speak to your dead loved ones, and offering a false sense of family. In the Vice interview, they would actually speak about this, about how they joined the group, and Hope would say how she joined them after she googled something spiritual, based off of what was going on in her life. She had been fired from a job and also was going through a breakup. In Love Has Won, she would say that she had found someone who knew what was going on, the bigger reason why we are all here. Um, for me, it was... I probably found the website around this time in 2018, maybe the, 2000, the end of 2017. Um, I booked a session in February of 2018. I didn't talk to mom. I talked to a team member that was there at the time. Her name was Faith. And I spoke to her a few times. And after I had the first session, um, for no reason, I was fired from my job the next day. No explanation, no logical reasoning. And... I remember driving home and I said to myself, I was like, 
am I supposed to go out to California to be with these people that I, I talked to last night and had a session with? And they were joking. They're like, yeah, come to California. We're having fun. Spiritual awakening, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, this is crazy. No way. I'll, I'll do it from on the east on the east coast. You'll find me on the east coast. I'll, I'll do it from here. I love you guys. Next day, lost my job. I denied it for a few weeks, and I couldn't get another job. So I called again, and I was like, what the frick am I supposed to do? Like, what am I supposed to do? And Faith was like, you got to come out here. So I was like, I was out there in a week. And there was a part of me that knew I wasn't going to come back. There was a part that knew in that moment I had accepted that. And I just knew. And I've been here ever since. Aurora, on the other end, was into conspiracy theories. And then started searching what we are here for. And for 10 years, she searched it. And finally, in 2016, everything clicked when she discovered love has won. And for 10 years, I searched high, or not 10 years, like seven years, I searched high and low to figure it out. And then in 2016, I found the website. I was Googling something spiritual. Um, and shortly after that, something similar happened where my career, I was a lawyer at the time, and something happened and there was a lot going on and it was basically pushing me out of my career. Aurora was actually a lawyer, but found out that this is something bigger, and it was pushing her out of that career. And this is when all of the jokey aspects, all of the things that don't make sense, really take the second place here. Because if they manage to convince smart people, if they manage to convince people who were lawyers, who were in serious professions, making serious amount of money, who is to say that if you were to be searching for something similar and to see a group or a movement offering you the exact thing that you are searching for, you wouldn't go for it. I mean, just think about a true crime YouTube channel. It's like you find something, you get obsessed, you binge on that motherfucker. Like, you are there. You're like maybe even buying their merchandise let alone if it's, again, something just, just a different niche. It's just something spiritual, it's new age, it's what you're interested in. You're then going, checking their website, checking their social media pages, engaging with them, with that person, with that content, buying their merchandise and making them profit out of it. During Dr. Phil's interview, he questions these two about holding Amy to a higher standard. And you really see them saying that she has taken them in when they were low, without realizing that what this means is that Amy does take in people who are at a vulnerable spot in their life. Do you think you owe it to her to hold her to a higher standard than letting her get to the point that she's that drunk and abusing followers? I have been with mom for two and a half years, and I will tell you, she is the absolute brilliant, kindest, sweetest being. She has taken me from a highly dysfunctional place and made me highly as brilliant as she is. You are seeing a microscopic piece of mom. She is absolutely amazing. I have spent almost three years by her side, and she is absolutely amazing. I would not be the person, the feminine that you see on the live stream every day in front of thousands of people if it wasn't for what she has done. She is my best friend. She is a companion. She has shown me so many beautiful aspects of this planet that have been forgotten. Aurora and Hope quickly become prominent figures after leading the group's daily live streams. But after Jason showed up, these two members who are featured in most of the videos really change. In one, Hope says, it's like with the Jews. Hitler knew the truth. Hitler was trying to stop them. They were trying to become bankers so everyone would do the work for them. The concentration camps were just about teaching Jews how to work. She also said, if Mother God dies, we all die. And in the next video, she talks about Mother God ascending and how that's her grand plan. Love Has One's narrative was becoming more paranoid, and Amy was described as being under constant assault from dark forces. Stories of assassination attempts continued in videos into 2019, including supposed incidents in which Amy was struck with etheric darts, and another in which her spleen and pancreas were infiltrated by the cabal. 
The content of Many Love Has Won live streams during this period mirror the Book of Revelation, with followers talking about Amy breaking through seven seals, after which she'd moved on to transitioning seven trumpets, then seven bowls. Predictions were made, goalposts were moved, each day Amy's progress was updated, though she virtually never appeared on camera. Based off of these goalposts, however, by September 13, 2018, it was said that Amy had processed 99.3 of the world's negative energy. The rate of growth slowed exponentially as she approached 100%. Her pain was described as reaching 50 out of 10. Miguel Amboy described her situation as very dire and warned that something might happen to Amy's physical body. Her followers said that Amy was bedridden and eventually that she was paralyzed from the waist down. It's difficult to know the actual state of Amy's health at this time. The stress has taken a toll on Mother God, which will be the excuse that she will use for everything, but truly the more followers that she got, the worse her behavior was. There is a video of her abusing the cat. Hey, stop it. Stop being a bitch. She holds the cat up in the air by his front feet. She brings its face close to hers and keeps saying, surrender now. She holds it up by its neck and the cat is meowing. Now she said she was just lifting it up by its scruff like mama cats do. One problem with that is then when that is done correctly, the cats are paralyzed momentarily. They can't meow. Second, I know a lot of people do that, but new studies have been published that say that it's not safe for you to handle your cat that way. A mama cat shows what she's doing and how to grab them correctly. Doing it yourself could be painful for the cat and can definitely cause them some spinal problems. So it's not advised you do it. Her reasoning behind this is that she was teaching or disciplining the cat. She looks like a drunk being mean to an animal. She was also recorded teaching these parents how to discipline their two-year-old. The child was fussing or acting out, so Mother God tells the parent to put them in a timeout, in a dark closet with the door closed and locked. You can hear the child screaming, and after two minutes the parent gets the child out. But he isn't ready to submit to Amy, so she has put him back in the closet for two minutes again. The video was short and there's no telling if those parents stuck around and became part of Love Has Won. You locked a child in the closet. Take a look at this. When asked about it, she said the child had no idea what discipline was because they never used it. So she was merely teaching the parent how to put a child in timeout. Yet when Emerif puts her in a closet, it's abuse, but not when she's done it to a child. Also, who is she to tell anyone how to discipline their kids when she abandoned her own?
With the abuse, you really start seeing the inkling of a mission, because she claimed she could remove brain tumors, fix kidney failure, but like I said, for a price, and these surgeries were not cheap. Aurora and Hope say that they've been with her for two and a half years, and they have witnessed the thousands of surgeries mother has done, and they have met the people after, seen that they are cured. If you remember, when asked about her treatment of the followers, she said it is not sleep deprivation. She said the energetics were not using their sleep properly, so she was fixing it. Part of her mission as Mother God is to fight behind the scenes, raising the vibrations so that humans can ascend and be 5D. Only 144,000 will make it, and the rest will be recycled into the galactic sun. This is the closest we'll get to some sort of ideology. You'd think someone doing surgeries all day, the all-powerful human, can do it all herself. But not, which kind of defies for me the purpose of Mother God, this figure who can do everything herself. However, there is also a Galactic Federation of Light team that includes a man named Master Saint Germain, an entity called Chiron, and a few more. They are the ones assisting Mother God in her etheric surgeries, where she removes cancer and also cable wear. Mother God says that she serves love completely. Also, she's so full of integrity because she served love on this planet always. She's in an extreme amount of pain because of the karmic contract with humanity. She can't just heal herself. She describes herself as love in action, despite saying in the many lives she has lived that she's been raped many times, stolen from, and had her house burned down, she gets weary. As I serve love every day and I am in love and action every moment, that is my role. I've been like that since I was born, uh, serving love. And a lot of my the anger things, I suppose, if you call them that, or is it passion? Uh, comes out because I've been raped several times. I've been stolen from. Um, they burned my house down. I've been come after so much. And it gets a little, um, you get a little weary. <laughs> the rest of 2018 is a blur. The followers were living in California before moving to Florida. But that is where Father God, Jason Castillo, was arrested for trespassing on the property of a guy called Bill Vestal, and he went to jail for a few months. Apparently, he said the property owner, Bill, told him to evict the people living on the property, but Bill said he had just hired Jason as a maintenance man. As the front while Jason is in jail, the followers are going to start telling people that Father God is on the mission. So, on March the 9th, 2019, they moved back to Colorado from an RV park in Florida. And there were allegations that they were asked to leave because Amy's acting was just out of control. She was recklessly driving a go-kart around the RVs. So, Jason got released from jail in September of 2019, and then he went to Colorado to be with everyone. However, just a couple of weeks later, there was a house fire in a small home in Moffat where they stayed. The fire was started by a propane tank on the property that belonged to Bill Vestal, the same man. And no charges against Jason or anybody were ever filed here. And the saga and the clusterfuck continues. We spoke so far about how she was making the profits, rather how the whole organization was. They would take all of the belongings, all of the money from the people when they would join the following. And then also the etheric surgeries were there, any courses that they could book online. So, Love Has Won, however, had been registered as a 501c3, a non-profit religious institution, listed as a church. So, how is it that they were actually still bringing in the money for themselves, to support themselves, to just do their lives and basically not have any other jobs. Remember, anything of worth was in Miguel's name. So, we have spoken earlier about the etheric surgeries, but the lives were also the perfect time to ask people to donate to Mother God's food fund, her game fund, because, of course, games on her cell phone are the only thing that helps her relax. Her joy fund. Somehow, as God does, she's playing these, these games on her phone that 
are, they're kind of like a lot of games she'll play, she'll like build things up, like a Sims game, or she'll like do like cooking based stuff, like very, you know, simple things, but she likes that sandbox type thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, I feel there's a lot in that, uh, there's a lot of codes in that that you can flip, and so, yeah, when you provide to that game fun, it not only brings her that comfort, it brings her that joy, it's also flipping the whole ball system. Right. Yes. Also, apparently, she was fighting the Cabal in those games. Apart from live streaming for hours on end every day, members would write blog articles, perform online consultations, and worked on their e-commerce business. Gaia's whole healing essentials, again, rolls off the tongue, perfect marketing, which sold things like essential oils, crystal pyramids, and colloidal silver, which Amy herself started taking obsessively. If that sounds alarming to you in any way, that is because it is, because they were reported to the FDA for claims that a colloidal silver would cure COVID-19. I found a letter from the FDA sent to them with concerns about several of their products, including a bunch of weird named products like plasma silver elixir, plasma copper elixir, Gaia's organic nasal spray, again, all of them roll just off your tongue. So part of these concerns were that these drugs were unapproved new drugs, unapproved new animal drugs, and the methods of delivery. They are saying on their website that these are safe for both children and pets. Now, when have you seen something, even anything for consumption, just food, just safe for, yeah, everybody, you know, children, pets, like everybody can eat this. That's not how life works. So the FDA, of course, found a couple of concerns here, saying that the eye drops were concerning because they could mess with person or animal's vision. When it comes to the nose, nasal sprays were a concern because they were introduced into the nose, but can be delivered into the bloodstream quicker and in higher quantities. But the biggest issue here was, of course, with colloidal silver. They have stated on their website that colloidal silver was safe to be used in the eyes, so as eye drops, for any infections, irritations, and to protect against any viruses, that it can be used for children, adults, and pets. Colloidal silver, taken in high amounts, can be toxic to your body. It affects your nervous system. There have been cases reporting of silver toxicity associated with seizures, cortical basal degeneration, and psychosis. And this, to me, potentially, apart from possible mental health issues that, again, none of these people is diagnosed with, and drug intake, might be an explanation for some of the behavior shown. But topical silver used on the skin has some appropriate medical uses, such as in bandages, dressings to treat burns or skin wounds. It's also in medicine to prevent contractivitis in newborns, but those are by prescription. And you should never buy silver off of a random S website and put it in your child's eyes. So you should never be swallowing silver products because they have no use. They literally don't digest properly. The FDA gave them 15 days to respond to their letter and make the necessary changes to their online business by removing the harmful ones and not mismarketing the others. Beyond this, as a non-profit, they would also take donations for Crystal Schools, which was going to be an education set up for the children that were one with love, already in right action. Among the unanswered question here is where do all of these donations go? Because they're still accepting them. Among allegations, there are a few floating the Reddit threads about trafficking people, a few missing people cases that might be knit with the cult, and until someone investigates, we will not have the answers we need. I didn't have the time to look into them further. I have listened to really good coverage on this case by Weird Reads with Emily Louise. If you want to check that one towards the end, she mentions a couple of cases where they have been covered by different podcasts and stuff, but none of them have been proven to have been linked to Love Has Won. That's why I haven't mentioned them here, because a lot of them are still just speculation. In our timeline, however, we are in July of 2020, and Mother God, Father God, and Father of the Multiverse went to Hawaii. And this was to be a vacation, or perhaps she knew the end was near. While they were there, Mother God appeared on the Dr. Phil show by Zoom. 
Her mother and two sisters were there in the studio with Dr. Phil, while Hope and Aurora were linked by Zoom from Colorado. Her family wanted to shut this down, they felt so bad for all of the people that they were scamming and all of the followers that she was hurting. She defended everything we've talked about here, including the child in the closet, what she did to her cat, their rules, and if she is really a supreme being. At the end, there was a cult expert, Rick Ross, also by satellite, that said that Amy is the nastiest cult leader he's ever dealt with. She operates a bait-and-switch online, bringing new members to her and then using sleep deprivation and mental manipulation on them. Disturbing example of cognitive dissonance, which is when people who have accepted something as fact are confronted with... Uh, disconfirmation, that is, they're confronted with the videos of, of, of uh, Mother God, and it is in contradiction to love. It looks like someone who has lost love, not uh, someone who has love. And so rather than deal with that reality that these women are being confronted by, they spin it and they rationalize it. And then in the group environment, they reinforce it so that they can believe it. But to all of us who are watching those videos and dealing with Amy responding to it, what we see is someone in denial and someone who can rationalize virtually anything and who holds herself out as never being wrong. And the members are confirming that. They're basically saying, Amy can never be wrong. And whatever Amy does is always right. Mother and Father God didn't stay in Hawaii long, because people on the island found out that Amy, while there, declared that she was Pele, the Hawaiian goddess of volcanoes and fire. And this did not go over well at all. They had only been there for a couple of weeks when their protesters, with big signs, were out on the streets telling them to go home, in front of the house that they rented. It was not a pretty scene, and the mayor came to see them. He let them know that it was not safe for them to remain on the island. And they were given flights to San Francisco and a police escort to the airport, with tons of news media following in a caravan. Late in 2020 and the beginning of 2021, the followers started talking more about Mother's God's health online. They were saying that they had always known she would ascend, so she could complete the work of bringing humanity into 5D. By this point, Amy herself was incredibly skinny. It was hard to look at, and she started to turn blue from the high consumption of colloidal silver. That is one of the side effects when you take it in high quantity. On one of the lives, Hope talks about how Mother God had asked her to take her to the hospital. But Hope would say that because of her contract and what she knew Mother God truly wanted, she denied her. They didn't think there was anything medically wrong with her. They just thought she was wasting away and weak because of the pain and suffering that has been placed on her. They said she was in a stasis, and it made me wonder if they even knew what stasis meant, because she was in a completely opposite state. They might have meant metastasis, but I guess she didn't have cancer, so I don't truly know. However, nobody, not a single person, lifts a finger to help her. Hope would say that mother couldn't speak and that she was delirious. Her whole body was on the brink of shutting down. So instead of helping this woman she loved like a mother, the whole team were transforming everything that they could to clear their vessels, to be a support for her. They said she begged them to take her to the hospital, they wouldn't. Father God is with her every day, all the time, and he does nothing. The whole cult sits by and watches her die, or ascend, depending on how you see it. Because you know that if you start talking about what mom actually did, which is ascend, and transform the consciousness of this entire planet, then you have nothing left to talk about. There's this video on their YouTube channel where, after their death, Hope and Aurora are in front of the camera again, speaking how she had actually ascended and transformed consciousness of the entire planet. And this kind of sets the precedent for, really, the rest of this video, because we are going to speak about the mummification, how the body had been found, and what happens when the cult leader dies.
The owner of the rental house in California, remember from Hawaii they flew to San Francisco, said that he said goodbye and hugged her on April the 10th. And on April the 16th, a wellness check was done, but the members told the police that Amy wasn't there. It was these comments that prompted Amy's family and concerned viewers to contact authorities in Mountain Shasta, which resulted in the wellness check. According to both her family and her followers, the ambulance was turned away. The energy of the life that these guys were distributing on April the 17th would make some believe that they might have known that Amy wasn't among them, that maybe she had ascended or passed away. They would say, we don't get to just stop now. We have to keep going for mom. So grateful that she's not in pain now. So grateful she's at peace. But a few hours later, in a follow-up stream, they seemed to indicate that Amy was still alive, saying, Mom is still resting. She's still kicking ass for us. Police recovered Amy's body on the 28th. At the time, authorities believed she'd been dead for some time, though they didn't know how long. As of this writing, the coroner's report has still not been released. At some point between the 16th and the 29th, Amy was driven from California back to the home in Moffat, Colorado. And they wrapped her in plastic and sleeping bags, put her on the bed, and built a shrine around her. When her body was found on 28th of April, seven of the followers were arrested for charges in connection with the possession and interstate transport of the deceased human remains of Amy Carlson and two counts of child abuse because two children were living in that house with a dead body, a 13-year-old and a 2-year-old. They're both with other family members now. Unfortunately, all of the charges were dropped. Amy's family wanted an investigation. However, I have her autopsy report, and her cause of death is global decline in the setting of alcohol abuse, anorexia, and chronic colloidal silver ingestion, and the manner of death is natural. The things she died of were preventable, and if anyone there had gotten her help, she may have lived. Many people are angry, no one had helped her, but don't forget, Mother God had a cell phone every day, all the time. Something else that I have actually confirmed with Jeannie from the autopsy report that she had sent me is that there's no indication that she had ever been paralyzed, disabled. I feel like that is something that would have been mentioned, even for the commoners that maybe don't understand the medical knowledge, because there is a whole examination of, like, internal organs and then external examination as well. And that is just something to point out that I had never seen, and yet, to this day, again, have seen no explanation in any of the lives as to... How do you explain that your mother, God, was never actually paralyzed and that she was just lying to the whole world? The same way that I never explained that when Jason was in prison, he wasn't actually on a mission, unless, I don't know, what was the mission? To commit more crimes? To, like, resolve? To murder one day? Like, what was the mission? They never explain a few little questionable details here and there. So let us speak about where this case is now. Even though Mother God died and her body was eventually removed, nothing has changed online. When she died, they switched to 5D Full Disclosure. This is then the name of the website and the name of the YouTube channel. But they're still doing lives, selling products, and talking about how Mother God is saving humanity. When thinking about why the followers are still supporting a leader that died, one aspect of this cult is the belief in Mother and Father God. If you look at this as a family, they all lived together and supported each other like siblings. Then consider how children of abusive parents act. When a parent dies, there can still be unresolved issues that make the grief process so much harder. Even in a normal, healthy parent-child relationship, when the parent dies, you tend to forgive or forget all of their failings and only remember or focus on the good. That's human nature. When people have abusive parents, like Mother God and Father God, and they die, they would be even more loyal and in no uncertain terms would ever speak ill about them. As to why they didn't leave and still haven't left, consider the idea of just leaving your parents, never speaking to them again. How sad and empty that might make you feel. Children with abusive parents don't even think there is a way out, let alone trying to find it and leave. 
That is a struggle so many have in our society, and it's amplified and on display in this cult. When I read about the more outrageous beliefs in this group, like the intergalactic cabal trying to steal Earth's resources, I questioned how would intelligent, educated people believe this. Don't forget that she used Christianity as a base and she pulled bits and pieces from it, so her followers had an easier time buying into it. If you are already conditioned to believe in an all-powerful being that you can't see or hear, you are supposed to take their existence on faith. It would be less of a leap to think that God is here, in the form of a person. In Christianity, there is the foundation that Jesus, a carpenter who has been crucified on a cross, could do fantastic things, like turning water into wine and died on the cross to save you all from your sins. When you translate that to modern day, is it really such a leap to believe a McDonald's manager is God and has been sent to save humans from an intergalactic war? She had also borrowed from other religions, like Buddhism. You can see that her followers clasp their hands, lower their heads and say Namaste. When talking about the mummification, Amy talked about being Cleopatra and living in that time. Egyptians regularly mummified people as a way to honor them and put their soul to rest, give them peace. Amy Carlson was found on her bed, surrounded by a shrine devoted to her, and kept there so they could honor her. They believed her death set her free, so that she could ascend and do the work of her mission. In doing this, keeping her there in the house, in essence, she never left, so of course, they would continue her work even after her body was taken by the coroner. If you listen to her followers now, they will tell you Mother God has ascended and begun the work she was destined to do. Amy Carlson, even though not killed or sacrificed, became a martyr for their cause. And you only need to look at modern times to know how powerful a martyr can be. According to an ex-cult member who has the inside track, there is a divide there. Miguel took all of the money collected for Crystal Schools, all the money in general, and is now running his own team. The followers left behind are trying to pull together to continue Mother God's work. Amy Carlson's son said, It's not a great thing, but hopefully this brings an end to the love has won the battle. I hope the damage stops now. And that is the story of Love Has Won. I think I have lost my voice, but I wanted to say I pass it on to you now. God, that was okay. Let's play some beverage. <sighs> yeah, let's have a beverage. Stop being dramatic as fuck. You roll like put the telenovela for in this video right now. As I was saying, I pass it on to you. What do you think would actually make this cult stop? Like, is it a divide? And how does that divide happen? Honestly, I think like even just them not being in the same room, even just them chilling and not going live every single day, which they still do just under a different name on a different website. So the YouTube channel has been inactive for about a year, but I still see the videos on their website and the courses and the workshops and the merch store and everything like that. I genuinely think just putting them into reality, like, you know, for them to just face somebody from the outside world that they consider to be beneath them and shit, just for a second, just for a couple of minutes, just for a couple of days, maybe a week, and I have a feeling they just, they'll, the divide will happen. The divide will happen. Or what I put in the script and how I ended it, getting them out of this headspace, getting them laid, that's it. That's the tweet. That's how you do it. Motorbike crew in the moment, we pass it on. Because I truly think that Amy's death here, if anything, you would think like logically, okay, it will make people wake up, like it will crush this cult immediately, but it seems like it had made them stronger. It had opened up a darker space, a door to a completely just dark alley, because now they truly believe that the mother had fulfilled her mission, that he had ascended and gave them life in 5D or whatever bullshit they were fucking saying. And that's dangerous. That's kind of even more dangerous than when they operated with Amy still alive. Meaning however many videos, however many articles that people publish on this case, 
we are not offering a side that hasn't been seen yet in terms of everything is already on their channel, everything is already live. And even with that material, they are still bringing people in. And that is why I'm covering it. It's just dangerous to see the side of the recruitment, to see that people will watch these videos, they will know everything, they might have watched Dr. Phil episode, they might have seen the Vice interview, they might have watched all of the abuse, and they will still go into it. It's so dangerous, and Amy's death just opens up a whole new well, and a whole lot of opportunities for them to actually dig into and make even more profit. And it's, it's so, so scary. So my question to you is what needs to happen for this to stop? For them to, I don't know, be banned? For the website just to be taken down and the merch store and everything else? And even more importantly, for those people to see life, to get out of that cult and that abusive, abusive, toxic thing. It just went downhill each and every year that the group, the movement, whatever you want to call it at this point, had existed. And obviously then Jason came along and everything just went even worse. So that is my question to you. I will now take a break off of research and scripting for about a week. And then I shall be with you after that with another story. Possibly a cult, possibly another cult, and then we are done with cults forever. So Jeannie, better make it good, okay? Better choose a good one. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure on it. And uh, then after that, I have one more story for you for this year. So two more stories that you're getting in year 2022. And the other one is good. I'm digging my own clothes into it, and it's British, and it keeps my noggin going. It's genuinely one of the most insane cases that I have uh, covered on this channel, and also it involves one of my favorite individuals. individuals. Have you watched Hunted Channel 4? That's your clue. That's the only clue that you will get. Hunted Channel 4, if you have watched it, there's a character there that will be mentioned in that story. That's it. That's it. Yeah, I'll leave you. If you guessed it, if you guess it, we are immediate best friends. Genuinely, if you're guessing in your best friend. Also, if you watch Hunted, you need your best friend. There's so many, you know, avenues, cavities. You want to say cavities? There's so many little avenues and issues of how you become tips and tricks of how to become my immediate best friend. And a lot of them are just based on the same interests, yes. I will now <laughs> resort to pleading you and to loving you. Okay, cool. Bye now. Bye, guys. See you in about a week and a half, two weeks in Muscle Manos. Let's go. Let's go. Bye. My out. My out.